Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So we are left with two main concepts of complex numbers. Okay. So we're going to cover those concepts inshallah today. So I'm going to divide this into two videos. One's going to be a smaller video. So this is what we were supposed to do in the last class, but due to lack of time, uh, we didn't. And because of all of the fact that there were already a lot of concepts covered in the last class, so that's why I didn't. So there are some small concepts, okay? And uh, there's basically one concept, which is a collection of small concepts. And then there is one another major concept, which once again has a lot of uh, small concepts within it. Uh, that I'm going to do it in a separate video, okay? So let's start. Here we are talking about how to basically convert the modulus argument form to Cartesian form. So we know the... Cartesian form, that's A plus BI, or you can also call it X plus IY or YI, however way you like it. But uh, what if we want to, we saw how we convert it into modulus argument form, but what if we want to convert it back? So it's very easy. Okay, it's not going to take us a lot of time. Let's uh, write down the date. Okay, so let's see first of all, what's what. So as you can see, Z equals to R into A, uh, sorry, into cos theta, plus i sine theta is the modulus argument form, okay? Now, what if I want to convert this into Cartesian form, which is basically a plus bi? Now, it's very simple. We do this through something called comparing, okay? So that's, that's how it works. So if I open up, let's say if I open this up, and if I multiply, so here's what we get. We get r cos theta, r cos theta, plus r i sine theta, Okay, now I would prefer to write it nicely. I would prefer to write it like this. R cos theta plus R sine theta, and then I'll multiply it by I. So what we do is we compare this with A plus B I. Okay, now comparing means that we compare the real element with real and the complex element with the complex element. So by comparison, we've converted back to Cartesian form. So by comparison, we can conclude that A is equals to R cos theta and B is equals to R sine theta. Okay, so once you have uh, where, remember, R is the modulus and theta is the argument. So once you have uh, R and theta, you can, you know, change it back to Cartesian form and, you know, you'll have the same complex number from modulus argument to Cartesian form. So let's do an example. One example will be more than enough. So let's say we have the following. Let's say we're given that R, oh, sorry, the complex number Z is equals to, let's say, root 2 cos pi upon 4. But let's, let's say it's pi upon 3 plus I sine pi upon 3. Okay, so make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. Now, what do we do? Here's what we do. First of all, let's open it up. So root 2 cos pi upon 3 plus root 2 sine pi upon three, and this multiplied by i is equals to a plus bi. Now, after comparing, let's drag this down a little. This is another concept which we're going to do. After comparing, we reach the conclusion that the real element must be equal to the real element. So that means a is equals to root two cos pi upon three, whatever that is equal to. Let's work it out. Let's drag this down once again. Okay, so use your calculator and remember what I said, make sure that your calculator is in radian mode. So we have root two cos of pi upon three, which is equal to root two upon two. So here we have the value of A and that's root two upon two. Now let's talk about B. So how do we find out the value of B? For that, we compare the complex element with the complex element. So that means B is equal to, or you can say the coefficient of iota with the coefficient of iota. So B must be equal to root two sine pi upon three. So let's work out the value of B. So instead of root two cos pi upon three, we're gonna work out root two sine pi upon three and we get root six upon two. So B is equals to root six upon two. So that means the converted version, after I converted, this is what it looks like. So after conversion, it's root two upon two plus root six. Let's write that again, root six upon two. If you want, you can factor out one upon two iota, and this is what the complex number is, okay? So same complex number Z has now been converted to Cartesian form, okay? Now there is another form which we need to know, and that is called the exponential form, okay? So this is what it looks like. It's very easy. It's even easier than modulus argument form. 
So if you have a complex number in modulus argument form, then we know very well that this is what it looks like. It's R cos theta plus iota times sine theta. Now, if you have, if let's say you convert this to exponential form, then in exponential form, the same complex number looks like this. So it's R E iota theta, okay? Where you can see that R is the modulus. So R here is basically equal to the modulus of Z and theta is also argument of Z. Okay, so nothing different. Once you have the modulus and argument, you can write it in the modulus argument form in a trig or polar form. That's what we call it actually. And you can also write it in exponential form. So let's let's do an example to understand how things really work. So let's say that you have Z, which is equal to three into cos pi upon two plus iota sine pi upon two. Okay, and now what you wanna do is you wanna convert this into exponential form. So very simple. From this, we can see that R is equals to three. And from this, we can also tell that the argument of Z or theta is equal to pi upon two. And that's it, that's all we want. So this complex number, if you convert this from trigonometric form to exponential form, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be three E I raised to the power of pi upon two. So you can write them in a bracket or you can write pi upon two first and then I, it's up to you. It's multiplication at the end of the day, so it really doesn't matter. And that's it, job done. Okay, now let's do some example questions from past papers to give you guys an idea of uh, what it is that you can expect in the exam. So first part, always expect the first part to be you know something, something like this, like where you might have to uh, divide it, multiply it, or add, subtract, it could, could be anything. So the first part is, that we have to find u upon v in the form that's given. Okay, so u upon v means that minus four plus two iota divided by three plus iota. So what do we multiply it with? We multiply it with three minus iota and we multiply the denominator also with three minus iota, okay? So minus four into three, that's minus 12 and minus four into minus iota, that's gonna be plus four iota two iota into three, so that's gonna be plus six iota. Two iota into minus iota, that's gonna be minus two iota squared, okay? And in the denominator, let's see what's going on in the denominator, that's gonna be three squared plus one squared, okay? Remember, I'm using the identity, I'm using a shortcut over here. By now, I'm sure you guys have also gotten a good grip on this shortcut as well. So iota squared is minus one, so minus two into minus one, that's plus two. 12 minus 12 plus two is minus 10, plus 10 iota as far as the denominator numerator is concerned. Let's see what's going on in the denominator. That's nine plus one, which is 10. Okay, so that means we can simplify it and write it as minus one plus iota. Let's see if that's the correct answer. Seems good, yeah. Minus one plus iota is the correct answer to part A and we get three marks for that. That's easy, uh, that, that's pretty cool. Now part B says, hence express u upon v in the form of R E i theta, where r and theta are exact. So that means if it's in terms of pi, you have to keep it in, in terms of pi. And if it's a so square root, we have to keep it in square root form as well. So r is a no-brainer. As we know, r is basically the modulus. So square root of a squared plus b squared, which means square root of one squared plus one squared. So r is equals to root two. Now theta, as we know, is basically the argument of the complex number, which is minus one plus iota. Now, how do, what's, uh, how do I find out the argument? A good idea would be to first sketch. Remember, argument is the angle that is made from the horizontal axis. It's the angle that's in between minus pi and pi made from the horizontal axis. So minus one plus iota is going to be somewhere over here. So here's minus one, here's plus one. So that means this is the complex number, okay? And this must be the argument, okay? So that means if I do find out this angle, which I can by simply taking tan inverse of one upon one, since the opposite side is one and the adjacent side is also one. So let's call this alpha and this angle will be theta. So let's find out alpha first. Tan alpha will be equal to one upon one, which means alpha is equal to tan inverse of one, which is 45 in radian. However, it's gonna be pi upon four, but let's, be on the safe side, yeah. So it's pi upon four over on one upon four pi. And theta will be equal to pi minus one upon four, which is three upon four pi. 
So that's it with this information. We can put this all together and write it the way that the question wants. Okay, I'll just do it over here. So the complex number is going to be equal to root two E I into three upon four pi. Okay, and this is the final answer. Let's see if that is correct. Yep, that is correct. Okay, so there you go. Pretty easy two marks. Now, another example question related to the same concept as above. So let's see what this says. The complex number minus three plus iota is denoted by u, all right? Express u, so same question, that we have to express it in exponential form. So first part, let's start with r, which is going to be equal to square root of minus root, just root three squared would be enough because minus will eventually become positive anyway. So root three is three, one is one, three plus one is four, square root of which is two. So here's r. Now, before I can find out theta, a good idea would be to just make a rough sketch. There are rules where you don't have to make a rough sketch, but I always, because you don't want to occupy, you, you don't want your brain to occupy a lot of memory, just, um, you know, a lot of space, just memorizing stuff, which you can figure out there and then. That's my strategy, which is why I avoid um, asking my students to memorize. I just figure it, uh, I just recommend that they figure it out there and then. So minus three plus iota is going to be over here. So this is what the argument is going to be. So that means once I find out alpha, I need to subtract that from pi. Okay, so not drawn to scale. Remember, it's a sketch. This is going to be root three. Okay, actually, no, this is going to be one and the adjacent side is going to be root three. So let's find out alpha. Tan alpha is equals to opposite upon adjacent. I think this is going to be 60 degrees, but let's check. So tan inverse of one upon root three. So we're looking at one upon six pi. So alpha is equals to one upon six pi. Therefore, theta is equals to pi minus answer, which is five upon six pi, but to be on the safe side. Yeah, so theta is equals to five upon six pi. Let's put this together, see what do we get? So we get R is equals, uh, sorry, uh, the complex number U when written in exponential form is equal to two E five upon six by iota. Okay, you can write iota after or before, that's up to you. But this is how it's supposed to look like when you write it in exponential form. Let's see if that's a correct answer. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, now let's talk about part B. So part B says, show that u power six is real and state its value. Okay, so first of all, how do I find out u power six? So notice that we've already found out u that is equal to two e raised to the power i five upon six pi, okay? Now, what the question wants is that we raise this to the power of six, and then we show that this entire number is actually a real number, okay? So let's see. So we have two e i five upon six pi, the whole thing raised to the power of six. This is what u power six becomes. So that means this power six is on u, and this power six is also on e raised to the power i5 pi upon six. So two power six, whatever that is equal to, we're gonna talk about that. And e raised to the power i5 pi upon six into six. Now immediately you notice that this six and this six cancel, this is equal to 64. And we have e raised to the power i into five pi. Now notice that the argument can never actually be equal to five pi. So if it is if it is exceeding pi, or if it is less than minus five, uh, if it is less than let's say minus pi, then what do we do? Well, what we do is it's the same as trigonometry. If let's say theta is equals to 400 degrees and you want to find out alpha. So you'll go a full cycle and then see how many degrees more is it than a full cycle. So here's what we're going to do as well. So five pi basically means this. Here's two pi. Okay. And uh, this is going to be two pi plus pi. So that's three pi. And then this is going to be three pi plus pi. So that's going to be four pi. So if you think about it, five pi is basically two complete circles because that's what four pi is. And then another circle. Okay, so once again, what is what is basically five pi? Pay attention. One circle is two pi. Then another circle is four pi. And then half a circle is five pi. Okay. Now, if it is five pi, then that means... This is where it is, okay? This is what the argument is, okay? So what's the argument if the angle is five pi? 
that means the argument is in fact pi. Okay, now if the argument is pi, and notice that the modulus is equal to what? The modulus is equal to 64. Now, if the argument is pi, this means that where do we find this? We find this somewhere on the real axis. Okay, where do we find it? We find it somewhere on the real axis. And not just on the real axis, we find it on the left side of the real axis. Okay, meaning that on the real axis where the real values are negative. So that means this complex number is such that its modulus is actually minus 64, okay? Because R will always be positive, right? R will not take this value, will always be positive, irrespective of where the number is, okay? So if this number is such that it is, it, it is not moving vertically, that means there is no complex element to it. It's only moving horizontally and it moves horizontally towards the left such that its modulus is 64. That means this length, this distance is 64. And since it's towards the left, that means the real element, this complex number is such that its real element must be minus 64. Okay, so it must be minus 64 plus zero iota. And this means that since there is no complex element to it, this is a real number. Okay, so this is the concept that I, I wanted to cover in this video. I hope it's clear. And uh, in the next video, I will basically, which is also what we were supposed to do in today's class, in Thursday's class, I will basically, uh, we'll basically learn loci. Okay, how loci is relevant in complex numbers and you know we have shading, kind of similar to what we had in all levels, but uh, not some. this is not something that IGCSE students do. But anyway, you guys will find out. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to watch it and you'll soon find a worksheet as well to practice whatever it is that we have done. Okay, so I'll stop here. I'll see you guys inshallah in the next class or in the next video. So take care. Allah Hafiz.